Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chahan. Welcome to Courts Today by Live Law, where we bring you the latest developments from all courts across India. Let us start. In an important update, CJI Chandrachud today orally remarked that he would soon be constituting a seven-judge bench to hear the constitutional issue regarding money bills. This was when senior advocate Menka Guruswami appearing before a bench comprising CGI Chandrachud, Justice J.B. Pardewala and Justice Manoj Mishra raised the issue. A money bill as defined under Article 110 of the Constitution concerns financial matters like taxation, public expenditure, etc. The Rajya Sabha cannot amend or reject this bill. The money bill provision had led to controversy after the government sought to introduce certain bills such as the Aadhaar bill as money bill, seemingly to avoid the Rajya Sabha where the government was lacking majority. Even the amendments to PMLA were introduced through the root of money bills. While the Supreme Court had upheld the constitutional validity of PMLA, it had kept one issue open, that is, could the amendments to PMLA have been passed over as money bill? This question was to be considered by a seven-judge bench. Also, let me tell you that a seven-judge bench is already considering the constitutional question of defining a money bill and the scope of Supreme Court jurisdiction to review Lok Sabha Speaker's decision to certify a bill as a money bill. The correctness of majority judgment in Aadhaar case on this point was also doubted by the court. Thereafter, in the PMLA case, the question was left open for the consideration of a larger bench. Today, the CGI also said that he was listing all pending seven judge matters and nine judge matters for directions next week. We know that the Chief Justice of India, D.Y. Chandrachud, is a vocal supporter of hybrid hearings. At multiple occasions, the CGI has expressed his anguish at various high courts disbanding virtual hearings despite making huge investments in the e-courts infrastructure. Today, the court was hearing a writ petition which was filed against Punjab and Haryana High Court disbanding hybrid hearing options. Last month, the Supreme Court sought status reports from all high courts regarding hybrid hearings. Today, the court directed all high courts to ensure that no member of the bar is denied access to video conferencing facilities or hearing through hybrid facility. It has given all high courts two weeks time to comply with the order. The bench of CGI Chandrachud, Justice J.B. Pardewala and Justice Manoj Mishra issued several additional directions with regard to video conferencing facilities across high courts and tribunals. Some of these include adequate internet facilities to all advocates and litigants appearing before the high courts, links available through video conferencing must be made available in the cause list, and standard operating procedure for litigants to avail access to hybrid hearings. Expressing concerns about low internet connectivity in northeastern states, which is preventing the high courts there from providing video conferencing facilities, the court directed Union Ministry of Information Technology to ensure internet connectivity is made available to all courts in northeast to ensure access to online hearings. The court also inquired about virtual hearing facilities in tribunals across the country. The Supreme Court today adjourned the hearing of a batch of pleas challenging constitutionality of the caste-based survey conducted by the Bihar government. You already know that a division bench of the Patna High Court had rejected the contention that an attempt to collect data on the basis of caste amounted to a census and had held the exercise to be perfectly valid. The survey has now been completed and earlier this week, the Bihar government published the data collected from the survey. During the hearing today, senior advocate Aprajita Singh, appearing for the petitioners, took exception to state government publishing the data. She said that the data should not be acted upon because it was collected unlawfully. She further said, as the Bihar government had not shown any legitimate purpose for the survey, State's decision to seek caste details was contrary to Supreme Court's judgment in the case Puttaswami case, 
which recognized the right to privacy as a facet of fundamental right to life. When Justice Khanna questioned as to why the survey details were published, senior advocate Sham Diwan, appearing for the Bihar government, replied that the court had not passed any order against publication of data. The court observed that the matter required to be heard at length and thus adjourned the hearing until January next year, while issuing formal notice to state government. The court also refused to pass any order of stay or status quo to restrain the state from acting on the caste survey data. And now an update on the defamation case against the wire. Ex-JNU professor Amrita Singh has filed a criminal defamation case over a report published in the wire that she prepared a dossier allegedly depicting JNU as a den of organized sex racket. In March this year, Delhi High Court had quashed the summons issued against the editor and deputy editor of The Wire in this case. Challenging the High Court's order, she approached the Supreme Court. In July, the Supreme Court had issued notice in her petition and had asked the Jawaharlal Nehru University to ascertain if such a dossier was submitted. Today, the bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Sudhan Shudholia was told that the JNU Vice Chancellor had filed an affidavit stating that it had not received any dossier which was allegedly prepared by Professor Singh describing the university as a den of organized sex racket. The respondents have also filed their affidavits and the petitioner today sought some time to file her rejoinder to the same. Accordingly, the court listed the matter on 21st November. The central government has informed the Supreme Court that reservation for scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and other backward classes will be given in temporary appointments which are to last for 45 days or more. This was while responding to a writ petition which sought for SC, ST, OBC reservation in temporary jobs. This relates to two office memorandums of the Department of Personnel and Training which have been cited in the petition. The first one provided reservation for SC, ST, OBCs in semi-government bodies and autonomous bodies under the control of the government. The second one cited by the petitioners formulates a reservation policy in respect of appointments to central government posts and services applicable for SC, ST, OBC candidates in temporary appointments. The petition submitted that various departments and ministries of the Government of India have not even maintained the reservation policy. As per the RTI response received from various ministries of the central government, there was clear indication that the reservation policy was not being implemented in relation to the contractual or outsourced manpower. That in reality, no reservation policy is actually implemented under the scheme of the office memorandums issued by the central government. Last year in December, the Supreme Court had issued notice in this petition. Now, the central government has informed the court about an office memorandum of November 2022, where it had directed all ministries and departments to ensure that reservation for SC, ST and OBC be made in all temporary appointments which are to last for 45 days or more. Accordingly, the bench comprising Justices Sanjeev Khanna and SVN Bhatti disposed of the writ petition. But the bench clarified that in case there was violation of this office memorandum, it would be open to the petitioners to take recourse to appropriate remedy. Three days back, a Delhi court had sent online media outlet News Click founder Prabhir Purkayast and human resources head Amit Chakrabarti to seven days of police remand in a case filed under UAPA following allegations of the portal receiving money for pro-China propaganda. They have now moved the Delhi High Court challenging the same. Justice Tushar Rao today heard the matter. Senior Advocate Kapil Sibyl, appearing for Purkayast, submitted that the arrest was illegal and that no grounds of arrest were given to him and it was in violation of the Delhi High Court rules which say that an accused is entitled to counsel. 
This was because the remand order was passed without hearing Purkayas' lawyer and without considering his response to the remand application. The Delhi High Court has sought response of the Delhi Police in the matter. At the request of SGI Tushar Mehta, the matter was posted to 9th October. Election freebies are the incentives, gifts or promises that political candidates or parties offer to voters during an election campaign. These freebies are often designed to sway voters and gain their support. These might be promises of financial benefits, subsidized goods and services or cash handouts. The Supreme Court today issued notice on a writ petition challenging the cash assistance offers announced by Chief Ministers of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan as election freebies. The petitioner Bhattulal Jain submitted that the financial situation of Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh was very bad as evidenced by the reports of Reserve Bank of India. Nevertheless, the Chief Ministers of these states had announced cash benefits a few months ahead of the Assembly elections which are due the end of this year. He contended that the situation in the state of MP is so bad that public properties have been mortgaged by the state to take loans. The Apex Court agreed to consider the matter and said that a line has to be drawn between what is public interest and what is not. Nothing is more atrocious than permitting the government to distribute cash because ultimately the burden would fall on tax-paying citizens of the country. CGI Chandrachur today expressed happiness at the trend of more women getting appointed in district judiciary across the country. This was while referring to 75 newly recruited civil judges of Maharashtra who were present in the court today, out of which 42 were women. The CGI said that this was not a trend confined to Maharashtra but was happening across the country. The CGI also lauded the fact that some of the new recruits were multi-talented persons, one being a state-level cricket player, another a trained gymnast and some were artists. Thank you for joining us. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.